Thank you for joining today's webinar featuring Wallbridge. Today's session will cover how Wallbridge uses 3D scanning to validate BIM on construction projects. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Tim Kelly, Product Manager at Assemble. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, to get kicked off today, we'll quickly cover our agenda. Um, I'm joined by Tom Greaves and John Jarowitz today from Dot Product and Wallbridge. Um, each of us will quickly introduce ourselves and then our organizations. And then I'm going to give everyone a, a quick overview of a symbol BIM Cloud Engine. And then uh, we're going to jump right into the use case uh, that Wallbridge has gone through. And, and John's going to cover the bulk of today's show. So with that said, uh, as Samir mentioned, I'm the product manager at Assemble Systems. Um, I actually come from the commercial construction industry. Um, I have both pre-construction and field construction experience. And with that said, Tom, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, thanks very much, Tim. So I head up sales, marketing, and, and support for Dot Product, and I work out of our Boston office. We also have a development office in Wiesbaden, Germany. Before joining Dot Product, I was executive director of SciArc, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, based in California. And, and SciArc documents cultural heritage sites around the world, and in doing so, does a lot of laser scanning as part of its work. Um, in 2003, my wife and I started the SPAR conference, uh, or SPAR conferences rather. Uh, from we, we grew that business from a cold start in our kitchen table in 2003, and. Uh, remained at the helm until 2010 when we sold the business. So I've been around Point Clouds for uh, about 17 years. I think it was 2000 I saw the first one. So um, anyway, happy to talk a little bit later about our handheld solutions. John. Thanks, Tom. We've been using Tom uh, and Dot Products handheld scanners for the past three years, and we're excited to show you what we've been doing with the Tango. Um, my own background, in, when I started in, as an architect in 85, I was trained in historical work as well as uh, commercial work and did my thesis on extracting quantities from models. And so kind of fast forward today, we're really excited that the technology is becoming very affordable and also very useful for the guys in the field. And uh, with that, I've, I've got 30 years of experience. It's easy to see on LinkedIn, but I'll pass this back to, uh, to, to you, Tim. Just a high level for those of you that are unfamiliar with Assemble. Uh, Symbol is a cloud-based system that allows you to incorporate and publish your models and your point cloud data into a web environment that you can ultimately share across your project team. Information is handy to group, sort, and filter however you feel or see needed uh, to manage risk and ultimately understand your project more clearly and make better decisions. Uh, with that said, um, I do want to jump into the meat of this. Uh, sure. So um, I've got a rather busy slide here. Uh, Dot Product uh, develops uh, and markets solutions to capture and document the world in 3D on, on light devices, uh, phones or tablets. So in the upper left-hand corner here, you can see our DPI-8X. This is our flagship product. And we're in a pump room here in, in a high school project in Houston, uh, capturing that pump room. So that shows some of the, the, the capture side of what we do. We also have some tools to edit and annotate point clouds so we can crop them and mark them up. Uh, these tools run on both Windows and Android, and we can also take measurements. Um, one of the cool uses of our technology is it's very easy to get our data into VR environments. So it's just a matter of minutes. Um, you can capture some data and bring it into a VR environment. On the lower right-hand side, you'll see our Tango solution. I'm going to talk just a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, I want to show you, though, the, or point out the slide on, our, on the lower left-hand side. This lists all of our partners. All of the companies and products listed behind these logos can take our binary file format. Uh, and our, typically, our files are very small, 20, 30 megabytes uh, is typical. And they can take that data and do something useful with it. You know, in some cases, it's a VR solution. In other cases, it's a design solution. We're very proud to be associated with Assemble and Bloom, um, and cloud-based solutions to uh, integrate our point cloud with uh, design geometry. So um, let me just drill a little deeper into uh, two of the solutions, the DPI-8 and the, and the Tango solution. OK, so there's the uh, DPI-8X. You can see it's handheld, and it consists of a tablet and a 3D sensor on the on the other side of the device. And I just want to point out that 
the green and yellow data that you see on the screen, this is real-time feedback. Anything that we see on the screen that's turned green or yellow, we've captured. And we know in the field at the time of collection whether or not we've uh, uh, got the data. And uh, that's a central to, uh, part of our value that you can see in the field in real time whether or not you have the data. And, and uh, John will be uh, showing some more of that a little bit later. Here's our software running on a low-cost uh, phone device made by Lenovo, the Lenovo Fab 2 Pro. And uh, you, you can get these devices on Amazon. They're for sale today. Uh, they're under $500. And uh, really shocking to me that you can capture high-quality 3D data on a, on a phone and, and then connect to uh, an engineering application or a CAD application or a VR application. Uh, what we've endeavored to do is cut the cost of, of the capture side. Now, you're not going to scan a 200,000 square foot parking garage with one of these. They're, they're limited uh, in, the, in the volumes that you would go after. You know, a, a pump room is reasonable. A parking garage is not. So anyway, uh, just that's uh, a, a very quick look at, uh, at two of our products and, and uh, some of the software that goes with them. So with that, let me pass uh, the, uh, the controls to, to John Jerwitz, who's going to talk about how they use these technologies. Yeah, so first a little bit about Walbridge. Most people will say, well, who is Walbridge? We're based in Detroit. We're a 100-year-old company. We kind of key in on doing industrial work, although we've done some higher education and mixed use. Um, you can see some kind of major milestones for our company in that we had built the book building in 1926, and we then got into doing some munition plants both in um, throughout the Midwest and in Twin Cities and, and have done work kind of all over the, the North American continent and then recently finished a large um, project that was done in Mexico where we, we used a lot of this extensive hand scanning as well as conventional scanning. We got our hands on the Tango only uh, within a month and um, we were asked to feature it on Google's I.O. And Google was very interested in the work that we were doing. And we, we basically, like Tom said, we're shooting small areas that we either had not the time to set up and do our conventional tripod scanners, or we were just capturing data that was missed, that was uh, overlooked um, when we when went through the first pass. And as you know, is what you see is what you get when you scan. And we were trying to fill in some of the miscellaneous areas between pumps and pipe. And we did this in an effort to reroute piping, and also just to make sure if new equipment would fit when we brought it in. Now, before I get into this, there are some limitations with the, uh, the FOB device. For instance, the throw is only 12 feet. So if you're trying to get beyond 12 feet, it's not going to work, although the optics companies tell me that within a year, they're going to improve that uh, with the Tango device. The other thing is it's not going to capture tons and tons of data. You're better off doing smaller chunks of data kind of as you scan, you want to catch lots of oblique angles or be panning the object you're scanning around. And when it turns green, and we've learned that you just kind of got to wait for it instead of rushing it, just wait. Kind of like a key grip in the movie industry, you just slowly pan what you're doing. And then that turns green. Green is good. And so um, we've had good experience. What you see here are two, two of my field guys, Joel and Brett. And within an afternoon and a couple hours, they uh, were able to use the device and, and have some rather success with it. So because of that, we're seeing that it's scaling readily in the field for guys that don't have a lot of money or time to process with um, point cloud data. In fact, point cloud data can take um, several weeks to schedule because the equipment's in demand. And then we, we have time to process the data, which is rather large because we're capturing so much. So really the value in this device that's Tango, it, it, it's really something that you can do quickly, capture it in small amounts for small areas, and then be using it like that afternoon through a web viewer, um, which is why we're excited that it works with a web viewer like Assemble. Yeah, so I, I'll jump in here for a second and, and kind of uh, echo uh, what you're saying there, John, about being able to quickly make a decision, be informed about what that decision is. Um, in an afternoon, the idea, you know, it's, it's Tom mentioned maybe a pump room. Uh, you might have some equipment coming in, ultimately need to track what the process is to get that into the room or something, something of that sort. And, and to schedule and get um, the terrestrial scanners out on site may take too long. And, and ultimately, you need to jump out there really quickly and capture this information and, and, and process the information and make a decision. And I think that's exactly... Uh, 
the, the use case you're talking about in just a minute. But with that said, I just want to kind of Tom uh, and John have both mentioned the integration with the symbol here. And ultimately, the Assemble BIM Cloud Engine, what you're able to do is combine uh, point clouds with what you typically have seen in the past in Assemble, uh, which are your, is your model data. Um, we do bring in information from these handheld scanners as well as terrestrial scanners. And that data is incorporated into uh, our cloud environment, our product, Assemble Insight, uh, so that you can share that across your project team. So when you have this information all brought together, you're, again, being more informed. You have uh, more capability of collecting that field data along with your design data, and you're able to make those decisions there. So kind of jumping into a little bit of features, I don't want to dig too deeply into this because there's a whole lot of stuff here. But um, with this, um, with incorporating all of this information uh, with the Symbol BIM Cloud Engine, you're able to uh, run deviation reports and create heat maps or Excel uh, reports off of that. Uh, you can create um, CAD objects directly from those point clouds, so you don't have to go and remodel anything. Uh, you have the ability to create clash reports and do some clash detection between uh, CAD to CAD or point cloud to CAD. Um, you have the ability to, uh, you can kind of see there in the demolition planning, do some animation and, and staging and slide things through uh, your model. Uh, you also have the ability to compare and show uh, progress information between uh, multiple iterations or versions of uh, your point cloud or your scan data. Um, and then also the ability to look at changes, uh, see changes that have occurred if a piece of equipment moved or ultimately you're comparing uh, scan against your uh, design intent. You, and John will talk about that in just a minute. You can see that deviation there. Uh, but again, the, the important piece here, and, and John just mentioned it, is again, connecting all of this data and sharing it out across your team through cloud-based environments so that the rest of your team doesn't have any heavy software to download or install uh, or to, to get set up. And it's ultimately a quick login and you're able to go. Um, so just to reiterate that point, uh, this is probably a familiar looking slide to some of our existing customers, but it's uh, ultimately as easy as one, two, three. You go out, you scan the data, uh, you ultimately use a BIM Cloud Engine uh, desktop to process and, and publish, just like you would do your models out of Revit or AutoCAD or other. And then um, you're able to share that information. As soon as that's published, the rest of your team is going to get a notification that uh, that data is available, and you're able to uh, then collaborate and, and coordinate from there. The BIM Cloud Engine for us is um, a way to scale fast. Uh, most of our guys in the field, and when we're working with Walbridge Tech, we serve the operations side, as well as we serve outside um, partners like our owners. But in the past, they've asked us to do large scanning jobs, and it will take us a couple weeks to set up. So like Tim was just referring to, we can, with a portable device that's less than $500, go out and have guys in our field, our own people, collecting data. Whereas in the past, we had to schedule a technician that would take uh, a couple weeks to set up, and it's, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollar equipment, even all the way up to the Z and F and surfacers, which are very, very expensive. And then there's dust, and there's a lot of concern about things getting knocked over, getting damaged, and and all this represents cost to us, which is a big cost to burden. So, what we're looking at in this use case, um, what I'm going to show you was was totally uh, something that was just done with a, a Tango on a Lenovo Fob Pro Two. And these are just um, very, very inexpensive devices. That what we're looking at is checking clearance for equipment, clash points, and then it's just a single platform for a, a web login. We're pretty excited just because it's just so much more useful and not, not something that is um, it, it's taking a lot along the earning curve. What you see in the top image, which I'll be showing you live, is a comparison of model data with the scan data. And then what we like is that you can ghost images and show just piping or model images on the bottom image on the bottom views. So this helps us to understand what's going to happen before it happens. Um, we've used this for pinch points. Some of the learning curve that we've shown the guys is when they're scanning is to, you know, capture the columns or better yet if we can scribe a crow's foot or give us some control on the column lines that lets you know where things are. We've also taught our modelers to put 3D tags or to put markers on the columns so it's easy to find out where you're at. And uh, that, that's what makes it just very, very useful to us. So it's a reality check. We're also, because of the speed, able to check if our trades and our contractors that we're working with us are putting pipes in the right place. 
Um, and we can show this also in real time. Here's a hit to the design team that where there might be an interference or a pipe hitting something. Um, it just makes it really, really fast to say, hey, here, here's where there might be a potential problem. And that, that, that's what helps us for uh, daily capture. Currently using this for many of our different clients. Um, and we're excited about um, working with our design partners like designers to give them more, hey, here's what's really happening in the field as you're doing your design assumptions and making your pipe rerouting. That's what we're excited about. What we're trying to do, um, if you saw the Google I.O. event where we presented, it's making the uh, invisible visible is where we see the value in technology. So when we can show where things are in the field in terms of existing hits or where a tie-in would be or where even lifting points are or we've even taken our equipment and breaking it out on the loading dock and scanned it to show, hey, this is how it's going to fit. And even um, if we can show where our lifting lugs are and uh, where the come along and the spreader bars and, and we're able to show a lot of what would be invisible to a design team and we can make it visible in the field, that's what really makes it useful to showing a sequence for installation. I also presented recently at ENR Future Tech on the value of 2D in a 3D world and how you can see here in plan and in section how everything fits up is how our guys, our millwrights and our engineers think and adding that kind of real context to a model viewer like Assemble, we find exciting. In fact, I'll show you that in the section tool how you can slice through a 2D view and then it's able to measure more accurately. So the, the name of the game here is just getting scanned data uh, to be mixed with model data, but in a much more fast, useful environment, both for design and sequencing and installation. Uh, th so the first time we, we grabbed our tangos, that's myself in the bottom left. We did some tests with myself and it's here. When we found that we could um, show that we could scan a missing pump or a pipe or even some fittings that detail that was missing in the model, and we got excited about it, so then we threw it in the hands of the superintendents to say, hey, when we're not able to scan for you, are you able to go and collect for us in the field? And both Brad Berndix and Joel Wallace said, sure. And they actually grabbed a hold of uh, a tango that we had and went out in the field and actually scanned for uh, a compressor uh, installation that was going on at the basement of one of the research labs for General Motors at Warren Tech Center. And then that's what got featured uh, recently on uh, national news. Why we're excited about it, though, is that there might be a safety issue where something could be a hot pipe and you don't really have the ability to set up um, with this type of a device where you've got a scan in your, in your pocket, basically. It's a pocket scanner. You can scan something and capture it and show that there's a hazard. You can also show that there's an obstruction or where you might need more clearance for some equipment that's coming in. So this idea of uploading information, scanning quickly and sharing quickly, all those three things you see in the pie chart, there's a synergy there that makes it much more useful and effective. Um, and again, it's making what's invisible in the field visible um, and, and transparent to the whole team for a collaboration effort. What I'm showing you on my screen now is, um, believe it or not, I'm broadcasting from a, a local public Wi-Fi that has a bad internet connection. I chose it on purpose because I wanted to show how fast this works. And this, I'm looking at a very large model. It's got a lot of polygons in it. And I'm actually be able to zoom in here on a public Wi-Fi with a normal computer, not anything fancy. And this shows you my design model. And then here I've got my model tree. This is the same kind of view that you would always see in a viewer like Assemble. Now what's exciting when you switch to mixing the scan data, and I like to start in plan view like most people do in Navisworks, is with the um, mixture of the scan data from a Tango, it does slow down the navigation just slightly, but realize I'm showing lots of different point cloud data that's mixed into a model viewer, and when you zoom in on it, you can see the data isn't probably as crisp as a tripod viewer, but it's also not bad. In fact, we've had some really good success with this in just doing measurements like clearances. First, we had to find out if we could um, pull together um, and, and, and actually set some equipment between these compressor tanks. And you can see here my measure tool is pretty easy to find. And I can just now I'm clicking on point cloud data when I'm doing this, but just between the control panel and the inside edge of this valve, for instance, I'm seeing I got 89 inches to clear there. And 
that's the kind of thing out in the field. Like, and, and honestly, we had an 80, we had a seven foot wide crate. It was 84 inches, so we weren't sure if it would fit. And with the skid, we were able to fit right through there to install these blue compressors that you see in the background. And if I pan over here, I can see if I had enough room, which the owner was concerned about, between uh, the back of this housing and, and where the new control panel set. So what's in blue is what's designed. And then if you look at the point cloud data, that's how it actually got installed, that control panel, to the inside edge. So you can see there, we, we wanted to make sure we had 36 inch clear, and we just barely had enough there. And that's the kind of thing that we find really useful. The other thing I like about how they've set this up, it's really easy to switch. Like if I want to refresh my point cloud data, I can do that. If I want to just look at my model data, I'm able to do that. And then if I want to take a cross-sectional talent, uh, pan, here, let me go back here, I'll do a cross-section pan really quick. I'm able to do my cross-section pan just purely by slicing through the point cloud data. So there I'm looking at just point cloud data, and, and that's what we find really useful is this slicing tool. The other thing that we like to do is um, look at simple clash detection. Now we do robust clash detection in Navisworks. But one of the tools we saw that we could do really quickly and effectively is look at, and this I just learned about just recently, but you can actually look at highlighted colored diagrams. So where you see these red boxes here, that is where an object clashes with another object immediately. So I'm seeing my clash detection kind of on steroids like we do typically with Navisworks right through this interface, which is really, really kind of neat. Now, if you're just looking at point cloud data, it can be kind of intense, especially from the Tango, because like I say, it isn't super crisp, but it's also not that bad. And we've been processing it with uh, Tom Greaves' dot product. We found it really easy, useful to do um, like references to columns. So you can see I'm always encouraging the guys to scan a column so they can get capture that, helps us to align. But also what we like about it is mixing with the model data so that it just makes it uh, simpler um, to view in 3D and in 2D at the same time. But I'm telling you that this data was caught in an afternoon in hours and not in days and not in weeks. And the processing time was very, very fast. And when you're actually able to zoom in and look at dimensions, with precision, um, you can imagine the repercussions of this to both show a designer, hey, this is what's really going on on the field, or to uh, installation guys, this is how much room you really need to make sure it fits, or in the example of an owner making sure he really had clearance between the back of the columns and the panels. And, and I mean, that's, that's where the value of this is. It's making the invisible more visible and readily usable by the team in a shared environment for collaboration. Um, you can also switch, just showing you some of these other tools, um, you can actually toggle and slice it from top down. So let's say you want to just look at it more simply with the guys in the field, they sometimes look it's too complicated to look at everything in 3D. If you use the overhead section tool, you can actually start dialing in and you can see this tank in the field was actually set just a little bit off of where the real tank was in the model. So you can use this as quality checking, and maybe in reality it doesn't matter that the tank was set that far off from the model, but maybe it was going to interfere with some other trades that were depending on the tank being in the right spot. So you can see that this can be used for quality checking. Quality checking for us is a big deal at Walridge, and uh, also for safety, because um, we're think demand delivers safety in all aspects, and if there's a pinch point, let's say, between you know installing or, or if there's only two inches clearance on both sides when you're bringing something in, this is a tool that makes that very, very, uh, very useful. Kind of see what's going to happen before it happens. Okay, so why don't I recap? So we got a really cool section tool. We've got the mixture of some scan data with um, model data. So I've got point cloud data and model data mixed. I'm able to section, and in the last uh, part of this is the ability to measure readily with my measure tools. So those are all the different uh, the features of this, of, of what's going on here. And then if you just want to switch back to model view, uh, that's rather easy to do too. And you can do a quantity extraction right to Excel. And you can compare versions of the model just as you always could in Assemble, which is where we find you know, some very strong, powerful tools there and very useful. I do want to uh, give our warmest thanks to both Tom and John for spending time not only in providing this info and preparing for today's webinar, 
but all the help along the way to get us uh, to this point and assemble.